if you have a woman that's especially a competitor and their testosterone's down, their estrogen progesterone aren't balanced, and they have an underactive thyroid or even a suboptimal thyroid. Yeah, that's when you run into respond. somebody that's like, okay, you're taking calories away, you're adding cardio, and nothing's happening. And like you go, okay, there's some, there's a missing piece here. That, exactly. And this is when I say, okay, I need you to, um, I have, I'll have some really cool case studies for you, but I got a, a really, really good one. We could not, she was about five pounds over stage weight and I could not get her to drop a single pound. Hmm. So had her reach out to Aspire. She went through the panel, T3, T4 issues. Um, I said, okay, we're going to just reverse for a while. She has pr gotten leaner and she's eating more and doing less cardio. And it's, and she's like, I just feel amazing. I'm like, all right, well, we're not going to go back into prep till next year. I just want to get you stable. Sure. Um, but she is an amazing competitor. And I just could like, I could give her three hours of cardio and, and zero carbs. She's still not dropping weight. I'm like, what is going on? And I didn't do that to her. Sure. Um, cause I have thresholds where I'm coaching someone. I'm like, okay, this is, if you can't get lean on a reasonable approach, you need to go find out why. And just like people say, you can't outwork a bad diet, right? You can't out diet and outwork bad hormones, right? It's that simple. If your hormones aren't in line, I don't care what you do. You're on a hamster wheel. Yeah. And you're going to keep on that hamster wheel until you fix the issue. Yeah. Which is why I have a huge problem with the way that the medical weight loss community, for anybody listening on the podcast and the audio, I'm doing very big air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> the medical weight loss community, they're all Band-Aids. They're all Band-Aid solutions for things that really are more than likely hormonal issues. And this issues. is something we can talk about with the lifestyle people because a lot of people will come to us and they've done the HCG diet mm -hmm. and they're like, well, don't I need HCG? And I go, no, you were on 500 calories. That's yeah. why you lost weight. It wasn't the HCG shot that you're doing, but they, they kind of correlate like, oh, a medical doctor told me to do this diet, so it must work. And I go, well, you were on 500 calories for six months. That's why you gained 30 pounds. You, you crushed yourself yeah. and you've got to correct that. HCG had no weight loss capability at all. When people come to us and they, they've done these diets um, and that's kind of what they want to do again, I say, like, you didn't learn the behaviors to lose weight. You took a drug that suppressed your appetite, mm -hmm. but you didn't learn the skills how to make your own food, how to be hungry and know you're going to be okay, how to not grab a snack on your way out of Walmart. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't learn those skills. So when you take away that drug, you're going to go right back and it would probably be worse than it was. Well, and that's what happens. And people take this phenermine and phenermine will stop working in your body like most stimulants. You take a whole bunch of caffeine, what happens? You After a couple more. months, you <laughs> yeah. either got to take more or you have to cut that's it down. That's why Starbucks is rich. <laughs> ex yeah, exactly. That's why people are addicted to coffee in this country. Uh, Starbucks, unfortunately, very bad coffee in my opinion, but <laughs> neither here nor there. So the phenermine, your body gets used to it to a point where it will no longer work after about eight weeks. Some people earlier, six weeks. Our clinic model kind of differs from the rest of the industry is they're very much on a sales pitch kind of method. Sure. You know, they, they want to sell the protocols, the drugs, everything else, which it's business. I understand what they're doing. You know, the way that we approach it is more from an educational standpoint. Sure. We want to educate the patient. So you come in for a consultation. We want to tell you, hey, this is what we see in your blood work. This is how we know it can get fixed. Here's your choice. Yeah. If you make no choice and you're like, hey, I'm good. Thank you for the information. See you later. Yeah. There's no, there's no membership. There's no program. There's no cancellation. You're paying for that consultation. You're paying for the blood work. If you want to proceed from there, you're paying for medication. That's how that works. And it's a very simple process. And I think for us, it made people kind of trust that we actually kind of give a shit yeah you know like we actually care i want you to feel better my entire prerogative my entire purpose is not to grab everybody from every single uh you know medical space and have them come to my clinic sure i want more clinics to open i want more clinics to be competitive with my there are more than enough patients for every clinic on the planet we're not even scratching the surface on the amount of people we can help yeah so for me it's education yeah i want to educate the public that this is real medicine this is the way that medicine probably should have been the whole time. Solve the underlying issues. Let the body process things as it should. Everything cascades. Yeah. You well, know? I mean, honestly, the greatest medicine is a healthy lifestyle. Like, That's it. You know, like you, you treat yourself well, good things happen. If you want to watch more episodes, click right here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, right there. Make sure you like and comment.